Well, he was uh, he was the cut up pretty much. Uh, he was the spark behind it all. Um, from everything I heard, he he was a character. They say he was he was primarily a showman. Um, his fiddling wasn't the greatest. Um, his singing wasn't the greatest, but uh, but he had the most fun. <laughs> you know that they, they I've always heard the stories of. Of course, he and Riley were always pretty close. And, um, and, but there was kind of a competition, they say, that was always between, uh, Papa Tanner and Riley, in that Riley was more of the ballad singer, um, and, and more of the, you know, his thing was to, uh, sing the tear jerking songs, and, uh, he'd get a crowd, and then, uh, Gib would come out, and, uh, he would do the opposite, basically. Put on a comedy act or show and do all kinds of stuff and uh, and and have the crowd going the other way and uh, there's always a little bit of a competition between the two of them to see uh, who could get the biggest applause. But the big picture of it, they kind of knew, you know, between them they knew they knew the the uh, goal was to entertain the audience and uh, so that's what they did. Oh yeah, they say he could they say he could draw a crowd. Um, of course, that's that's what was kind of commercially appealing to him. You know, he was, uh, he was just a natural, prom- I shouldn't say promoter, just a, just a natural showman. And, uh, I've heard stories from, uh, from people later on, you know, they even said later on that he would, uh, no matter where he went, uh, if it was to a store or, you know, to pick up supplies or anything, he'd carry a fiddle with him and he may just put on a show, uh, wherever he was. Just for the fun of it, you know. Or he might have he might have some records in the trunk of the car that he would, he would get out and sell. Whatever he could do to draw a crowd or entertain, that's what he did, and uh, that's that's what he loved. But evidently, it was just a uh, it was just all natural for him. Most of most of all of their relationships, uh, all the musicians in this area came from the uh, Atlanta Fiddlers Conventions, which was huge back then. You know, even before. Uh, record, the phonograph record, um, business came on. And, um, which is kind of a neat study in itself because, I mean, you know, they were drawing, they were drawing crowds of 20 or 30,000 people in the Atlanta Municipal Auditorium for, for the Fiddler's Convention every year. And, you know, that was, that was huge entertainment, um, uh, when that would roll, roll around every year. And, and the newspapers would print articles and, and, uh, Papa Tanner would stir it up. He'd always say something controversial in the paper, you know. They would kind of help promote it, you know. I think one time, uh, one time, one of the stories is, is that was printed in the Atlanta Const- Constitution was that he was, uh, this year he was, he thought he was going to win the fiddle, you know, the fiddle contest because, uh, he was going to use Stone Mountain granite dust on his bow is going to give it a special bite and 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 it it really raised the stink <laughs> with the rules committee and everything but of course it was yeah. all a joke to him uh but he just said yeah he discovered that stone mountain stone mountain granite dust you know just did wonders on your bow he he really expected to win it that year and, and before it even started some of the other pillars had already filed protests because he was going to use a foreign substance on, yeah. <laughs> on his bow and stuff yeah. like that, you know. But Papa Tanner and, and Riley, of course, Riley playing the guitar would back up some, and then the format wasn't just a contest. Um, you know, it was, it was a big deal for, they call it a fiddler's convention, because all the fiddlers, they say, would just get in a room and, and line the walls and, and play. And that's where they learned a lot of new songs and new tunes, because before that time there was nothing. There was no phonograph records to listen to, and radio really hadn't came on. So up until that point, you know, you had a fiddler's convention, and it would draw fiddlers from all different different parts of the of the area, and uh, they'd pass around tunes. And uh, you know, there might be a new a new tune that. That say A. Ayers Gray knows that um, somebody else wants to learn, so he'd play it and they'd go around until try to try to get it in their head to carry it home. Yeah, that was it, you know. And uh, of course, a lot of tunes had been 
passed down for generations. Uh, you know, but if you wanted to learn something new, well, you had to get with another musician that already knew it. And uh, the fiddlers' conventions were one of the one of the popular ways for fiddlers to do that, and other musicians too. You know, Frank Walker with Columbia Records said when he was looking for somebody to record, he came into this area and and basically, you know, just asked folks, "Hey, who should I get to record? Who's popular? Who who would you recommend?" And that's how he came to uh, get in Riley because everybody knew him from the fiddlers contest and uh, so uh, he made the offer hey would you come up to record or ask Papa Tanner would you come to New York and record some sites for him we want to try this out see how it goes and uh, he said yeah I'll go if I can bring Riley with me and uh, he said sure so uh, they uh, they started recording and of course uh, you know Papa Tanner kind of already had the popularity, but then once they started recording too, I think they discovered that he really had a gem in Riley with the, with the singing. His voice recorded so well and uh, just a good quality voice too. They kept kept signing them up from there. 